10 o'clock. Thank you. So it's 10 o'clock. We will call the meeting to order. Um, but just for the record, Steve Holland is joining us from um, Science, Illinois today on technology. So we will stand for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I should also add that Josh Moore is on his way here. He's going to be just a little bit late today. So we will start with um, public forum. Is there anybody who would like to speak for the public forum? Dale, Dale did you want to speak for the public forum? <laughs> so it was like the, no, we didn't drive. We didn't drive past. Did you? Did? <laughs> yeah, I'll speak for a little bit. Just, I'll just remind the late last night. Okay, that's okay. You can be unprepared for three minutes. Come on up. <laughs> well, I was here what a month ago. Do you, want to, do you want to say who you are? And oh, I'm sorry. yeah, do a first word with Nosey Township. You're fine. I knew who you were. <laughs> but um. At any rate, I was sure what it was to sort of talk, you know, the, the parking lot that they want to do through 360 and stuff way out of the ability. Yep. Um, we're very against that for many reasons, like I said, and we have a number of petition sheets that are going around. We've got township advisors and board members involved and signing interest in this. I guess that's how serious we are. Um, can I help you with this for just a minute? For me? Can I help you with this for just a minute? Sure. Um, so it's going to be on the agenda later, but it's not going to actually be a parking lot anymore. What they're going to do is they're going to fix the boat landing and make it so that it's it's more accessible and then work on the road to widen the road to make that better so that it will be easier. So we, we're not looking at doing a parking lot at this point. Thank you. You're very welcome. Okay, the boat landing where and what road repair this, this, the same place where they use um Matt, do you want to so, that so Ter Terry, this He's is a different about... project that he's speaking about. Oh this isn't the Crooked Lake project. Product. I was sorry. Okay, keep talking. Oh yeah, we've seen a little bit of progress at Crooked Lake. Yeah. So keep keep talking. I was on the wrong lake. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm talking about the 360 in Blue Township. Put a bigger road. Uh, it's a half a mile before the um True. That 360 up in there. Oh. Greg says, Greg Beck said that they're going to put a parking lot up in there. Okay. And that's the one that we just don't want more neighbors and more blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Okay. Is that still in the works? That is still in yeah. the works, yes. Is there you have a date? Um, it's on the agenda for a little bit, and we'll be talking about it at that point. Okay. It's just to get the people are parking on the road now. Where? Oh, that's just what Greg is. Isn't we live out there? We don't see anybody living out there. It's just an invite. For people. It's going to be open, and there's going to be, we're going to make park the vehicles just in, up in that inside the gate. That's just something. Yeah. I guess I'm curious then. What really? <clears throat> What's really the situation? There's nobody parking on the road. Yeah. So the county actually thinks there's people parking on the road? Yes. Well, see, we, but they say there's not. We live out there. We don't see it. Yeah. We see ATVers go through there now and then, and of course the litter and everything else, and the deer stands that are illegal back there and everything else. It, we're just upset. Why? You know, why? Okay. Thank you. <laughs> I'll be a little more prepared. Come on up. Yep, you're fine. So you have three minutes, and if you'd state your name and where you're from, that'd be great. Um, that's at home. I live up on the uh, Matthew Lowry Trail. And we have a lot of people going down the trail. And the 360 he was talking about, there's nowhere to go. It would be just a parking lot. Then they're going to have to go out back out to the road anyways, you know. And I've had in the past, I've been up here almost 26 years, broke into, robbed. My, uh, my house was, uh, my uh, cabins were burnt down. 
who it was, we don't know, obviously, you know, but we're trying to trying to keep people that shouldn't be there, there, and the people that want to be there, be there, you know, because I have people come up to my driveway and I know them and stuff like that. And I said, you can unload right here. Fine. It's not a problem, you know, but these are people that are hunters and stuff like that. And they're all good people. There are a few last when it was um, right after deer hunting, I had people driving their trucks down and from my place um, goes down in the bridge. Well, Beck knows it all about, you know, bridges and everything. Bridge is out and you got water, standing water, you got planks underneath there. They're driving their vehicles out all the way out to where Doyle Road comes in. Oh. For what reason? You know? You are needed at the nursing station. Pardon me? I don't think so, no. <laughs> Keep going. <laughs> but I, I actually got into my truck and went out there and got him out of there. But there's been more times that I can count that I'm in my shop working, you know, because I'm not too far off the trail. And all of a sudden you see a you know, guy in a truck go by. It's like, where do you people go? And why are you out there? Are they, are they on the memorial trip They wouldn't. Yes, yes, they would do. Yeah, because I think the that particular part stops within what two or three miles up. Well, the road comes in and like that, and then because um, I got some wood out of there a couple of years back, so that's <laughs> pretty much where it is. But okay. so the biggest thing is, I don't want to be picky, but the people. Well, how do you want to say it nicely about bad people? <laughs> you know, so but that's all I got. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is anybody else in the public forum? I don't see anybody. Is there anybody online, Ryan? No. Okay. So we're going to go to adopt the agenda. We do have some amendments and corrections. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, if we could add consent agenda item number 8B, uh, hiring of children's mental health social worker, and we have additional information for regular agenda item 2E, and that's a copy of the quick claim deed. I'll move as the management. Thank you, Matt. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Can, can you hear him? Yes, we can. Thanks. Uh, District 4, Commissioner Waldman. Yes. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig. Aye. District 1, Commissioner Holland. Steve, you're muted. You're muted, Steve. Well, I, I keep taking myself off mute, and then it goes back on mute. I'm sorry. So Debbie, anyway, Debbie's doing yes. Call. Yes. Thank you. And District 3, Chair Lovren. Aye. Thank you. So we need to approve the minutes of June 18th and July 2nd. Um, it was not in our packet last week when, or last meeting when we approved them. So um, we have a motion to approve June 18th and July 2nd, the, the regular board agenda and the, or the regular board minutes and the summary for statement. Summary for publication. God, I am really bad today, aren't I? Sorry, you guys. I just got home from a conference. So it's I'll, I'll move that, Ms. Madam okay. Chair. Okay, so we got a motion by Steve and a second by Matt. Are there any questions on either one of those? I have a question on the uh, minutes. I don't know if it was transposed to these minutes, but uh, I guess I can catch it at the when the other minutes come up from land advisory, so. Oh, it's not the actual board minutes? No, but are the, in these board minutes, is the land committee minutes in it? I think you're talking about for this board meeting, we have land committee minutes. Well, you said we had to approve two. Right, it's from the last two board meetings. So these That's are the second. board June packets. June 18th and July 2nd. Yeah, but yeah, in front of me. Yeah, there was nothing in there on land committee, right? No. No, okay. All right. Uh, District 5, Commissioner Ludwig? Aye. District 1, Commissioner Holland? Yes. 
Mr. Chair Love. Aye. Mr. Four, Commissioner Waldham. Yes. Right, and then we are going to go on to the minutes of the boards, committees, and correspondence. We've got the Outdoor Heritage Council notification letter and project list. I'll move it. Thanks, Matt. I'll second. Sec Thanks, Steve. Got a motion by Matt, second by Steve. Are there any questions on that? District one, Commissioner Holland. Yes. District three, Chair Lovren. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Waltham? Yes. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig? Aye. Thank you. And then we're going to go on to approve the consent agenda. Is there any questions on the consent agenda? Matt, can uh, we have a motion? Madam, yep, go ahead, Steve. I, I'd just like to point out those wonderful donations from the Lions Club for, for our yes. um, K9 units. That's pretty Thank awesome. You. It is really. It is. Thank you for that. Do you, no, do you want to move it, Steve? Yes. All right. Motion by Steve, second by Matt. Are there any other questions or comments? All right. District three, Chair Lovgren? Aye. District four, Commissioner Waldham? Yes. District five, Commissioner Ludwig? Aye. District one, Commissioner Holland? Yes. Okay. And we're going to go on to the personnel report. I'll take that, Madam Chair. Matt. Um, do you want me to do all, go through all and take action, or do you want to go one by one? Does it need to be? They can be all together. All together is fine. Thanks. You all? What's up? All together. Okay. Um, we had our meeting on July 6th, 2024, and uh, we approved an additional property appraiser due to the increase in number of contracts and approved the backfill of for any subsequent vacancy that may occur due to internal promotion or lateral transfer. May I interrupt you on that? That is amazing that we have all 47 districts that we're doing the assessment for. Yeah. Yeah. They're all they're all on now. Yep. Yes. Um, and sheriff's and sheriff's office in jail acknowledge the resignation of corrections officer Zachary Carter, effective July 5th. 2024 and approve the backfill of the shenanigans that may occur due to internal promotion or lateral transfer. We acknowledge the correction, the resignation of correction officer Luke Carlson, effective July 8th, 2024, and approve the backfill of that position and any subsequent vacancy that may occur due to internal promotion or lateral transfer. And we approve the Regrade of the jail administrative assistant position from a grade five to a grade six, along with updating the accompanying job description. In probation, we acknowledge the retirement of probation administrative assistant Suzanne Thompson, effective June 28, 2024, and approve the backfill of that position and any subsequent vacancy that may occur due to internal promotion or lateral transfer. Recruitment of that position will begin in the fall of 2024. In administration, we, we approve the update of the Pine County Policy Section 17, which is electronic communications resource policy to include Section 17.18 and the AI services and security policy. The rest of that was information only. And with that, Madam Chair, I will move Thanks, Matt. Do we have a second? I'll second it. Thanks, Steve. Are there any questions on any of those items? No question, Madam Chair. Yep. Well, probably actually. Um, given a pay raise for the position of administrative assistant in jail, I guess I'm looking at the job description. What's marked out, omitted. But what part of it, what's omitted is reviews, bookings for bookings, reviews, bookings, data accuracy, research data, and corrects errors prior to closing public roster. And we had a fatality January 2nd. Um, and the booking wasn't complete at the time of his death. So to give pay raises, just the giving the pay raises is to help with the fatality and that not happening again, you know, or how, how does that tie together? 
They're, Madam Chair, yes, Commissioner Wilhelm, they're not related. They're not related. So, um, Jackie can address the duties and why they might be changing. Uh, but the, the incident you referred to, the booking on that, had nothing to do with the administrative staff. The person was arrested, brought to jail. They had a medical condition uh, before they were actually booked into the jail. But that, those are not related. Okay. Before entering the jail? Because you... No, they were they were, they were arrested the, and brought to the jail. They were on premises. They're an intake. They're not oh. normally put in the jail. So they were in the intake portion on that one year. Okay. So then on this administrative jail assistant, they're not going to be responsible to review bookings for, for data accuracy. <clears throat> but that's no longer a, a requirement of this position. Okay. Are there any other questions? Debbie, do you want to do a roll call, please? Oh, wait. Okay. Yep. It was Matt and Steve. Sorry. Yes. We're good. We're good. Okay. <laughs> District 3, Chair Lepgren. Aye. District 4, Commissioner Walton. I oppose. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig. Aye. District 1, Commissioner Holland. Yes. District 2, Commissioner Warren. So it's personnel? Yes. Oh, hi. Sorry. Thank you. All right. So now we're going to move on to the Land Advisory Committee. Which one of you would like to take that one? You want to start? And yeah. All right. We had a meeting. Um, it was a fairly long meeting. I'll just I'll read through them all. We might do the whole group there too, Madam Chair. Thank you. Okay. Um, so... Um, Greg presented a pollinator food plot and parking, that, and he recommended the county board appropriate up to $5,325 from the land department, which is dedicated to the Parks and Recreation Fund for the remainder of the costs of the food plot and the parking area development in Section 23 of New Zosie Township that are not covered by the Minnesota Deer Hunters Association. Madam Chair, just for clarity, is this the project that the two gentlemen spoke to on open forum? Say it again. Is this the is this the project that the gentleman spoke to on open forum? This I think this is Kelly. Yes, I believe this is the project. Okay. I just wanted to, to make sure everybody was able to link those two. Yeah. Thank you. This is a project where the DNR came in and did that chew up project and yeah, and that down timber. Um, B, Crooked Lake, Carry, and Bolt Landing. Recommend the county board appropriate up to $11,000 from the land department, dedicated parks and rec recreation fund for the gravel and widening of this township roadway and some light ditching and a culvert. The rails to trails extension, recommend the county board appropriate $11,000 from the land department, dedicated parks and for a trail feasibility study included in the Pine County portion of the proposed trail from Mora to Hankel on the snowmobile trail. <coughs> that was the name of the assisting that. Uh, letter of support to the DNR, recommend the county board to consider providing a letter of support to the DNR for the Pheasants Forever purchase of the Formanek properties and subsequent donation of the property to the DNR. On that one, we will still receive um, payments, you know, like, oh, yeah, yeah. On E, that's the homes easement where we're seeing um, a parcel for sale in Danforth Township, and he has always had a, a road through the middle of the property to access a big hay field that he has property on. So, what he can access it another way, which he's agreed to do. So, we're just going to have him across a corner of the bottom of 40. So it's going to be like 150 feet by 150 feet. So the county sold him an easement there. So that's the uh, resolution 2024-41. And that's offering the requested easement to Mr. Holmes for 150 by 150 foot area in the southeast corner of the northeast one quarter of the southeast one quarter of section 33 township 42 range 18 to access real property if executed by July 30th, 2024 by Mr. Holmes. 
And that was the, the addition to our agenda was the, the quick claim fee for that. Yep. Yeah. And that's being done so whoever purchases that property on the sale is going to know that that easement is in existence. So it'll, they'll know it's there when they purchase it. Right. Withdrawal of a tract from the land auction, we recommend the 20 board consider resolution 2024-39 to withdraw tract to um, property ID number 22.0330.00 from previously offered adjoining landowner auction. Conveyance item G is conveyance to the city of Sandstone. Recommend the county board consider resolution 2024-40 to convey property ID number 45.5172.001 and property ID number 45.5460.000 to the city of Sandstone for inclusion in their vacant home restoration program for $1 each plus costs transfer. Um, item H is a little tramic late bolt landing. Recommend the county board appropriate up to $2,500 for gravel from the land department dedicated parks and recreation fund to update the little tamarack bolt landing. And that's a request from Wilma Township um, that it's just gonna, it's all washed out and stuff. There. So they just want some gravel. We just, they don't know how much, it might not take that much, but we just put it up to Thanks. And that's it. And with that, I will move and uh, all those items. I'll second. Right. So that was, um, <clears throat> we need, a, need to make a point of which resolutions those are. Yeah, those are resolutions 2024-39-40-41. Right, so we got a motion by Matt. Second by Josh. Are there any questions? I have questions, Madam Chair. Yep. Go ahead, Gigi. On uh, Part B for the Crooked Lake, um, and then also on the uh, Peasants Forever property. Questions on also on the uh, on the Holmes easement. I get questions on. Can I start with the first one? And then well, I just want to get a matter of record in case we lose this. And then also uh, part seven on the land auction. So starting with uh, Crooked Lake, it reads here in the minutes that it's granted or the zoning granted a conditional use permit on Crooked Lake. So it says it in the minutes. They did. It's They didn't the first time because they wanted the DNR approval. So the DNR came to the next month meeting. Um, the, Hydrologist was there, the DNR guy. Yeah. He said there is no wetland issue. What they're going to do has to be the CD. said there's no wetland issue. The DNR weighed in, it's fine. A bunch of people were at the same zoning board meeting and, and um, residents were also there. So, all I understand is this is, is an interim use permit was granted for Crooked Lake. Is that correct? Not a conditional use, but an interim use. Yeah, thank Kelly. Two different things. I am looking it up real quick. Thank you. That, that oh, is Mike, correct. It was, it was an interim use permit. Oh. Instrument statute 462.3597. That is what was, it was granted. It was for... changed in the meeting, in the course of the meeting to an interim use permit. Okay. Just want to make it clear for the gentlemen that were here today. So there's an error in the minutes. I will get that corrected. Yeah, I would think the zoning minutes would take precedence over this anyway, correct? Right? Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, the zoning that, that, minutes is the official action, and that was just for information only. Okay. To the land committee. All right. And with this being deemed a non-wetland, that falls into the other point I wanted to bring up. Tamarack Lake then is, is there gonna fill some area there? Then who visited that? Was it a TEP visit? Why is that then different? That's an existing bull land that just needs a couple loads of gravel. Yes. And then on uh, 
at the same question in relation to wetlands here on uh, part four of this on the property for the for the DNR for uh, between the Ray and Joan Formanac. Oh, Formanac, yeah. That's a private parcel. Okay. That the DNR is going to purchase from a private a family. Yep, still subject to wetland. Yep. Okay, so they're not, and that's why they're purchasing it. The DNR wants to preserve the wetland portion. Okay, it says in here the property has little to no development potential due to its swampy nature. So was that through the TEP or who made that determination that it's, uh, again, that it's swampy, not the, developmental? The DNR did. They, they're the DNR. purchasing, they're going to purchase the property. Okay, and then uh, part five here with the Holmes property, I understand that is all surrounded. There's there are some neighbors there, and usually what I how I understand it how it was explained to me, and there's some concern that when you when the county goes to sell part of that land, which they're selling an easement, 150 by 150 foot easement. For six hundred dollars, were the adjoining landowners notified of this, so they had an opportunity to purchase? The adjoining landowner is purchasing it, but there is a uh, a Kinney Creek Hunting Club and Rick Boerboom. Boerboom. So there's no benefit because it's across the corner above what they. No have. benefit or not, I guess I'm just trying to be constituent with this. Be consistent. The statute. Go ahead, if I can Ellie. jump in. Um, yeah, so this came forward from a request from the property owner. So I mean, any property owner can request an easement. However, I guess the important distinction here is that it's done as a non-inclusive eas exclusive easement. So really, it it doesn't limit it to just Paul either. It's there's an easement there now. <laughs> um. So um, it should this go forward. <laughs> I guess without the other landowners knowing, yeah, I would not like to see it go forward. Also, if it's going to be marketed in September, um, you know, I said it was appraised, but I guess I could, who appraised it. Was it an actual broker or appraiser that appraised it, or was it done in-house by the county appraised it? Correct. Our assessor's office is who appraised it, but they are licensed Minnesota assessors and have a significant amount of education, very similar to a fee appraiser. Okay, because anytime you you know you can purchase a piece of land with no easement, it's significantly more valuable than a piece of land with an easement on it. And I just don't want to take away from value without like I said, following what I understand is the statute to the adjacent adjoining. It it it, it is hurting land value and Brokers, realtors, or anyone else. I, I don't know if anybody's ever granted or sold easements on your own personal property, but it does take away from the value of it. And ultimately, if it's going to be up on auction, I would think the whether, you know, there's two choices. It can go to adjoining or it can go to the open public. I mean, is this just to accommodate one person over the other two before, I guess, it goes out to uh, public auction? Is it going to go to public auction or is it just going to be offered to the to adjoining? The property itself is out on public auction. Oh, and so this is what he needs before anybody else has a correct that it takes care of his easement request, yes, ahead of the auction. So um answer this one for me, please. If I purchase a piece of property and it's landlocked, I need to be able to get an easement or an access to that property, correct? So then this would actually take that that over and then, <clears throat> excuse me, it wouldn't have to go further through the process because we're taking care of that in advance, correct? Or am I wrong? No, you're correct, right. So this just, this just makes it so that it doesn't have to be dealt with after the fact, um, you know, after the sale and things. Um, and so, yes, I mean, even if we sold it as is, then this could end up to be a township issue with cartways and things. And so we're just taking care of it ahead of time because it is going to be an issue. He's got a significant amount of egg land that he wouldn't be able to legally get to. Right. Thank you. Yeah, because from what I understand, he already purchased the 40 
out there, which was, I guess, always described to me, the county carved out a 40 for him from a 160 to accommodate him previously. Um, well, that was offered on public auction, so anyone could have purchased it. Right, right. right. I understand that. And then, uh, and then as of the 150 by 150 foot easement, I mean, you mentioned, Kelly, you mentioned cartway. Uh, there's also, you know, how big is a cartway usually? Well, so a cartway would have to go out to a public road. So it is, I, I would have to pull up the distance that it is. It's quite a ways from a public road and they're usually 33 or 66 feet wide. Um, so you'd be talking 33 or 66 feet wide by a half a mile or a mile, I have to find this one um, to tell you how far it is over to um, over to the um, to the. It looks like it's a half a mile, so um, you'd be talking, you know, at minimum thirty three feet by twenty six forty to do a cartway. So, were the other uh, adjoining properties were they going to have an opportunity to? Make some small purchases off of this also, like if somebody wants to buy a cartway or if somebody wants to buy a, another 150 foot by 150 foot. I mean, to me, it almost seems like a, I don't know much about this, but I got friends that do. It almost seems like a small subdivision in a way where you're just taking out a small piece. Well, it's an easement only. Who else, who else can just buy this before it goes to... Yeah, just for strategy, I guess, is what they're thinking if they want they're to not, buy it. They're not buying property, JJ. They're getting an easement. Well, an easement gives them the property. Madam no. Chair, and, and Kelly explained this earlier, but any landowner can request to purchase an easement from the county. Yes. Yeah. And then at a sale, you usually notify by law the adjoining landowners also, correct? And that didn't happen? Except the easement's not, Except it's an easement. not a sale. You won't have to do it for an easement, I guess, is what you're saying. Okay. Did I, Miss Madam Chair? Go ahead, Steve. Did, did I understand correctly when I was looking through this? This is a non exclusive easement. Right. Is that correct? Correct. Which means it's not only limited to Paul. Yeah, that's in my mind, that's what non exclusive would mean. So, did somebody come to you and they were concerned that they would like an easement to something that they have also? Yeah, just questioning the sale, the, the sale of an easement. Um, I think it possibly tied to somebody wanting to buy other easements in the past to try to get in the property and they're just trying to get their mind wrapped around what's going on here. Okay. Well, I would have them contact. I would have them contact the land office to, to work, start working on the, the details of getting an easement to that then. Yep. Sounds like they were there. Um, had some conversation already. Um, that's it on this. Just so like make a couple of comments. Um, so part of um, the one thing I wanted to just bring up, uh, the, the Formanek property, they actually ran a, a deal the DNR did, and we should actually, we'll receive more in PILT payments than we will in taxes yeah. um, currently, what they're paying. Right. Um, so that, that's actually a good thing. And uh, um, they're going to look into these properties to make it that WMA. They kind of cornered together. There is a chunk of county property in there. Greg was yeah. going to explore, possibly sell them so they they truly did connect um in there as well uh and then uh that rails to trail extension um that was uh um Canava county approached us about doing a feasibility study because their that um, rail line that comes from Canava county that we own some of it or we own some of it and i don't know what deal is there but they're talking about maybe looking at putting a trail in there so um, madam chair commissioner moore so there is that rail bed that from brook park west to the county line is owned by the rail authority i'm looking at kelly on the screen i think that piece is owned by the rail authority the pine county rail authority and then canabic county owns it 
when it is in Canaba County. And they've been working for years to get that developed to a trail. And the idea is that it would connect to the Munger Trail in Hinkley. From Brook Park East to Hinkley is still the main active line. And so that's really not an option. And so this study would help develop alternative routes to get from, in essence, Brook Park on that uh, corridor to the Munger Trail. That would be nice. Um, and then on G, that conveyance to the city of Sandstone, um, city has been working on doing a few of these. So they restore them, um, the, the properties, their blighted property, um, and they they get them up to sell them and, and do other stuff with them. So I think that's a really good, uh, really good thing too. They do a really nice job. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, all the notes, the Crooked Lake Carry and Boat Landing, uh, Greg had said that uh, the township kind of was responsible for it. Uh, but we're just going to kind of help them, um, help them pay for some of the, some of the stuff, um, some of the gravel, it's widen it a little bit and, uh, some light ditching and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. It was, uh, it was a lot of information. It was a lot. And that, that road is the boundary between Wilma and Danforth. So both townships are involved for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I guess that's about all I have. I'm sure. Yeah. Right, JJ. Yeah, well, Commissioner Moore, and just so everybody understands how I think I understand it, he mentions we're going to get more money from PILT. PILT is payment in lieu of tax. That'll be what the DNR pays instead of what a private owner would be paying. Private dollars coming in. He's accurate. Currently, they are. Yeah, currently. But we don't. When you when you have the DNR paying taxes, it's still the taxpayer's money. We're losing we're losing private land to a government entity. The government entity is going to be paying PILT payment in lieu of tax of, so, of taxpayer dollars. This can be looked at in, in two ways, though, JJ. Um, we cannot tell a private owner that they cannot sell their land. That would just be a, a silly thing to do. And the fact that the DNR is going to purchase it and we're going to get PILT money for it is a blessing. So, I mean, you can look at it in two ways. Yes, it still is tax dollars, but we can't stop them from selling their land. And they want the land to go to the DNR. They want it to be used for natural yeah. resources and people to be able to utilize. So that's what tilt is payment in lieu of taxes paid by the government, and it'll never be in private ownership again. That's the only point I wanted to make. The, the blessing that it is. So are you saying we shouldn't, we should tell a private landowner they can't sell their property? Oh, okay. We've all been uh, instructed what PILT is. You don't agree with PILT? Is that what you're saying? Just explaining to the gentlemen that are here today what PILT is. And anyone else listening in, payment in lieu of tax. All right. Do we have a motion for the land advisory committee report? I think. So my, oh, we did. Okay, I'm sorry. Madam Chair, so my understanding is that the uh, motion was only for resolution thirty nine forty forty one. That's not correct. Right. All right. Everything. Okay. For everything, and then I just called out the resolutions to be sure everyone understood okay. the resolutions were included in the motion. Okay. That, that was my understanding. Okay. okay. So I, I didn't write it down, Debbie. Can you tell me who made the motion in the second on that one, please? Um, Matt made the motion and it was seconded by Josh. Josh, okay. Madam Chair. Yes, go ahead. At the beginning of when I started that, I, I asked if we should do all as a group and the so the man that's do you man stuff that you know in the middle. Yes, the entire Matt meeting minutes will be motionless for the entire minutes. Yeah. Okay. So are there any more questions or comments? Uh, the interim use then would be corrected right on. Yes, Kelly said that she would be correcting that. Yep. Gotcha. All right, Debbie. Mr. Short, Commissioner Waldman. Opposed. District 5, Commissioner Ludwig. Aye. 
District yes. one, Commissioner Holland. Yes. District two, Commissioner Moore. Aye. District three, Chair Lovren. Aye. Thank you. So we are on the second quarter 2024 budget reports. Uh, Madam Chair, members of the board, uh, after the first half of the year, the county's budget is sound. Uh, I've got a few charts that are being projected. So this chart one just looks at the revenue and expenditures of each major fund through June 30th and then the county overall. And you can see if you look overall that both revenues and expenditures are above uh, the three major funds. That's because there's activity in some uh, non-budgeted funds like health insurance, and then also the bond payments have an impact because the 100% of the principal and the first half interest are all paid in the first half of the year. So those uh, make it look like we're above 50%, but it's exactly what we would expect. Chart two looks just at the general fund departments that generate revenue uh, through June 30th. And everything is looking, you know, as it should at this point in the year. Planning and zoning looks like it's high. There is some pass-through grant funding for the Kettle River One Watershed One Plan that skews that high, um, but it is uh, exactly what we would expect at this point. Chart three looks at the general fund expenditures. Uh, you look at this and you think the recorder's office is off the chart. Uh, that's really driven by the contracts they pay early in the year. And then also uh, there's some capital uh, expenditures for software that are out of the tax and CAMA fund that show up in this report uh, that are not budgeted. But uh, despite the graph, they're doing fine. And then the last graph just looks at health and human services. And halfway through the year, everything there uh, is looking really positive. Thank you, Dave. And then we all received the summary and conclusion um, regarding the county administrator's performance review. Are there any questions on that? Oh, what? You, you need to put that in the record. Oh, I need to put that in record. Okay, I buried it. Well, we met with Dave and um, I did bury it. Sorry, everybody. So the annual performance review of the County Administrator, Dave Minky, was completed during the closed session at the July 2nd, 2024 County Board Meeting. Minnesota Statute 13D.05 Subdivision 3A states that at the next open meeting, the County Board is to summarize in conclusion regarding this about evaluation. The County Board reviewed his performance against the essential functions of the position, including assisting the County Board, supervises department heads, serves as chief budget officer, manages day-to-day -day county functions, and leads labor negotiations and contract management. Um, Dave, Administrator Dave Minky received an excellent rating by the County Board, which I would just like to emphasize once again that, that he does an amazing job for Pine County and that um, I am very glad that we had the opportunity to work with him. Does anybody else have any comments on this? No? Right. We don't need to make a motion yet. Okay. okay. So we are on commissioner updates. We've got East Central Solid Waste Commission. Yes, we met uh, the other day. <clears throat> uh, work will begin on the new cell They've actually been doing some excavating there over the winter, but the actual cell work will begin uh, probably in August. Uh, <clears throat> we, we need to be aware that uh, the Pollution Control Agency has lowered the standards for the amount of the forever chemical. We've read in the paper about PFOBs, um, and they've, they've lowered that to... Um, 0.004 parts per million from, uh, I don't know, four parts per million, let's say. So the, the threshold has changed. They, they have tested some neighboring wells. They have found some, uh, that chemical in their wells. So those neighbors were offered 
uh, water, drinking water. Uh, <clears throat> we're, I'm not um, convinced that the landfill is 100% responsible for those chemicals in that water because of some other activities that have taken place in that neighborhood. But uh, nevertheless, uh, that's the, the law we have to uh, live by. And so that is a uh, concern that we're dealing with. The more testing is going on as they, they look and see uh, where the flow of water might be uh, in the aquifer. Um, <clears throat> with the, with the uh, amount of rain that we had in April, May, and June, um, <clears throat> of course, it adds a lot of water into the landfill, which leaks out in the form of leachate, which um, means that we, we can't land apply that much uh, leachate. So we have to haul it to pig's eye. Uh, we have a guy, a guy on staff that takes a truck every day, makes, uh, I talk to Scotty uh, every once in a while, he makes three trips twice a day, two trips, two or three times a day. And so uh, we did authorize um, probably uh, a private company to come in and, and uh, supplement some hauling to get caught up if we should get behind again. Uh, and that's about it. Questions? Sure. Yep. yep. I, yeah. So when, when they change that standard of the forever chemicals, yep. is that gonna is that gonna affect the when you build your next site there? You know your next. <clears throat> uh, no, because because what. If, if it is indeed coming from the landfill, it's probably, my question was, how, do, how does it get out of a lined landfill? Uh, the history of that landfill goes back, you know, more than a half a century. And so the very beginnings of that landfill, it was online. It was not part of East Central Solid Waste Commission. And, and so there was a portion and it, it's possible that's where it came from. It, uh, we don't know yet until we do further testing. Okay, thanks. Yep. Steve, do you know Trista Martin from Ramsey County? I know the name. Okay, well, she just resigned as a commissioner, and she took the job as working with the solid waste management for Washington and Ramsey. Okay. She would be an ex. She's got some amazing thoughts and processes on, on how to, you know, because there's just so much garbage, how to, how to manage that better. Um, right. She would be a really good resource for you guys. And she's more than willing to talk garbage with anybody. Thank you. And, <laughs> yeah. and, and we, we do have an engineering firm that works with uh, several landfills around the state of Minnesota and the Midwest. And, okay. and, uh, you know, so we're not trying to figure this out by ourselves. Right. We rely extensively on their expertise. Yes. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Yep. Um, East Central Regional Library, we had um, a budget meeting. And so one of the things that I thought was kind of interesting, um, and this is going to be revised a little bit, we went down, but they did a per capita. So for each person that we have in Pine County, um, we're paying $13.23. Um, which really, if you think we've got over 50% of our residents in Pine County that have library cards, that's really not that much money, but um, it is being revised a little bit more and it'll be coming down. And once we get the final numbers at our next board meeting, we'll be bringing that and presenting that to the board for our budget process. So I gave Dave the preliminary so that they can start working on it, but that's, that's what we had worked on. Um, Mille Lacs Band of Ojibwe, um, it was very good to be there, um, to be able to celebrate Melanie's retirement and um, be there for the swearing in for Virgil Wind. Um, David and Becky and myself were there, um, which was very good. Um, I have a meeting 
Um, I believe next week where I'm going to be getting together with Harry Davis, who is the district one represent or district three. I keep thinking we're number one um, district three representative and um, just to see how we can start working better together. And so um, that that was good. Um, it, it was a good meeting. It was good to be present at soil and water. Yeah. And maybe is Mike Gaynor, are you still online here, Mike? I certainly am. Uh, yeah, uh, business is usually pretty much at soil and water, except um, I brought forward again uh, just an idea to try to coordinate better between the uh, soil and water, uh, us at the county, and some landowners up in Surgeon Lake for the for the uh, water issue. I know we had granted, uh, given money towards the water level project for a study, and I've been working with Mark LeBron and... Uh, Thunderson with the road right away. There's an outlet on the lake. We've been discussing that soil and water a few times. Um, that a landowner on the lake already worked with the, everybody involved, DNR, county, uh, to get it cleared out. And then it hits the road. And then on the other side of the road, there's a seven acre parcel. And I don't know, Mike, if you could just write the parcel ID down. Mm -hmm. It's 3306. Zero nine zero zero zero. Um, mm -hmm. I guess we're just trying to see if we can take the pull by the horns here, so to speak, and get everybody involved to sit down at the table. It sounds like there's just some something going on between the township possibly and the, that parcel owner. Um, if there could just be some some excavation, some digging to to increase that water flow, um, it would certainly help with everything that the uh, soil and water and DNR and everybody's been trying to work together on for the erosion issues and, uh, you know, the shoreland issues on that lake. It's, it's, it's exiting right through the county highway. It's going under the highway and then it's hitting a landowner. And it sounds like there's something that could be worked out between all of us, some sort of understanding. I don't know. We we're just talking about purchasing easements here earlier. Maybe the county could even, purchase an easement or something, working with the DNR and soil and water, an easement to get water moving to help exit the lake a little better. So anyway, that was a big thing we talked about. Does that flow pretty good there? Right up to the point where it goes under the highway and hits this parcel. I mean, it'd be like putting a sponge over the end of a straw. Yes, water will still go through there, but it's slowing down with all the vegetation. Is it because of the elevation? Stop. It's just, it's, it's growing in. Structure. Yeah. Structure. I mean, I've, I've known it my entire lifetime from, you know, fishing there as a little kid to pedaling by. It's just, it, things grow in when they're not maintained. You know, we all know that with any kind of ditching or anything else. It's, it's just growing in. And I'm hopeful that if everybody could sit down, you know, between the company and the leader and the DNR and Bowser and a whole list of them. Uh, Maybe we can get something going on because, like I said, we've already invested in this, and uh, you know we pay the taxpayer we pay a portion of to restore the shoreline and to do riprap and to fix this stuff. And if we're not looking ahead and taking care of this, we're, we're just kind of spinning our wheels. We're just going to continue to have this high water issue, and just from the locals that I talk to there, the farmers, people, um, they just think it, it, it's worth a try. And it's, like I said, just everybody recalls water flowing nicely through there, but it's just vegetation has grown up. So that's the parcel anyway. Mike, and please, if you could follow up with me after, and I would certainly like to be present also. Sure. That's all I have after soil water. Kettle River. Thank you, ma'am. We had our meeting on July 11th. <clears throat> So the, we approved the following three things. Uh, Kettle River Upper St. Croix policy bylaws um, with we approved what was there with our changes and then per review of county attorney and stuff like that. So we, we gave it a, we were satisfied with where it was, but one of our attorney reviews too, but we, we moved it. Um, we did the same with the master draft template for work that's going to happen and the uh, the state of work for individuals. So we passed all those out with what we thought was right. 
per approval of we through look at the bylaws and stuff like that, and and which I think he has, and 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 some other departments might have a tweak. So it, we want to keep things moving. So it's going to come back to us for a final. We did move it because it's pretty self-explanatory. So that was pretty much the, the crux of the whole meeting was to get stuff moving. Extension committee. No commissioners were able to attend. I did go. Uh, their major discussion was the budget, which I think everyone knows that their budget request will be up substantially due to the new MOA. And the uh, extension committee did meet at Medicine Creek Farms, which is the farm family of the year. Okay, thank you. Chemical Health Coalition, um, one of the things that we did was we purchased some um, Deterra bags, um, which are... If you have medication in your home, you can put them in those bags and they, they've got um, charcoal in them. And then you just add a little bit of water and it takes care of them. And um, I ended up at the NACO conference, they did a big presentation on it. And we found out that they have grants available and <laughs> they would give a NACO discount. So Becky and I are gonna be getting together to figure out how we can get some money back or if we can get some more so that we can actually send it out to homeowners. Um, We've been purchasing those for a long time. Right. And um, I think we purchased some once before and then this will, we just purchased some more to have on hand because it's such a good source. Um, what they do suggest is that you send them out to every, every home. And then that way people can, you know, cause we all have stuff in our houses. Oh, yeah. um, so we can take care of it and get it out of the, the path for children. So, um, but it was interesting the, the, I didn't realize they've gotten, it was either three or five awards for being environmentally friendly. They've um, got the bags that um, are made out of, um, oh, I've got it in these notes over here, but um, just the things that they've done to make sure that, you know, they said at first you were throwing plastic in the garbage can. And so they, they fixed it. Oh, it's made out of sugar cane. So now the bags are made out of sugar cane and the, the things that they've done to make it so that it's, yeah. yeah. But um, so we're going to be working together to see what we can get done on that. Um, Central Minnesota Jobs and Training. Did anybody go? No. Who's, who's on that one? I am? CMJTS. Oh, CMJTS. Uh, you we were. Have, we're meeting. We're, we didn't meet. <laughs> that would be me. Okay, thank you. No, we did not have a meeting. Um, we changed our schedule because we were meeting so much and they had one employee that's pretty much all that they did was to get ready for these meetings and she retired and it was re-looked at. So we're going to be meeting less. And um, our next meeting is going to be when we go to Duluth for the conference in August. Um, the NACO annual conference was crazy busy. Um, we, I did the presentation to get the PILT money for trust land that's put into the tribal trust land. And um, the good news and the bad news is, is that it was tabled. Um, they said that, you know, you've got a lot of people that depend on their PILT money out West and um, they didn't want any money to be taken from them. And, and it was made um, very clear that we don't want any money to be changed for the PILT calculations to come to this. We want it to be new money. It needs to be new money. It can't be transferring money. And um, the one thing they asked was how was that going to be um, calculated. And I said, you know, I, I didn't know, but that's the good thing about being new is that we could do it together. And um, what, what ended up happening was a guy from Washington state said, we need to keep this moving forward and I will work with you to rewrite it. And we will take it to the legislative conference in March. So in March, um, we will have it rewritten and we will be going to the legislative conference to present it there and see what we can get going. Um, and we have worked with Pete's, or I've talked with Pete Stiver's office and they're willing to work with us. We've talked to Black's band and they're willing to work with us on it also to see if we can get that taken care of. So um, other than that, we did a lot of, there was a lot of things that happened at the NACO conference, but that was the, the main reason that I had gone out there was to see if we could get that done. Um, Lakes and Pines. Yes, we met uh, yesterday, matter of fact. Um, things are, Things are moving along. You know, we've got some new people on board over there because of uh, um, 
I think we, we've lost some really good talented people probably because our pay schedule doesn't compete well with uh, the surrounding communities. And so people um, that get really good at their job move on, which is unfortunate. So um, we'll keep plugging away and trying to adjust our salary schedule. But, uh, you know, we have to every every time we give somebody a raise, it, it has to come out of the uh, program money because we do not have uh, we don't bolster that up with tax levy dollars, local tax levy dollars. It's all grant funded. So um, that's kind of where we're at. Okay. District Court Security Committee. Yeah. We had a meeting on July 10th. Uh, the main crux of the meeting was the security of the courthouse. <clears throat> of course, you know, that. but the single point entry is ate up a lot of our time. And it's expensive when you bake it all down. And and you've heard me say before, like when I was one of the meetings in Stearns and our, our other counties, that every every government building had deputy staff, that metal detectors. Well, my last meeting, I went to over there. Those were gone in Wade Park. So at the, the license center and the HHS department, that they're, they're, they're no longer. So they must have paired down to, I didn't go to their courthouse, but that was just out of government building. So they're no longer stepping, but it doesn't mean it, but it doesn't mean it, it's expensive even for the big city and the big towns. So our, our, the numbers is what we're looking at. So everybody involved knows that there could be an issue with security of the courthouse. So right now we, we run security through the metal detector whenever there's court cases in session and stuff like that. Other than that, it's a, the, the public walks in enough of that building from what seven in the morning or when they open the door seven thirty till they lock them at night. So there's always a constant what if or what could happen, and we always we've always just balanced that with the public needs to have the freedom to come in. It's their building, you know, and so it really if you bake it all down, it's like, how much do you want to spend? We can't afford to spend a lot. We don't have enough money to spend on it. So we do our model as kind of a hybrid. When, when court's in session, we make sure that you know, stuff's happening. Other than that, I don't know. I know at one time they were having a walk through at the end of the day with some of the staff and just checking for, you know, if somebody stuffed the backpack somewhere or something like that. But I don't know if that's still happening. Um, but we're not done. So the so we're, we're we're looking at having the people look at models or what we could do or what we could change to maybe make it better without spending a lot of money. So that's a work in progress. We're going to have a meeting in a couple of months, and there's going to be some emails going back and forth with ideas and stuff like that. So more to come on that. And then they there was some discussion on active shooter training, which I think Jeff has handled. His department has handled that training in the past there. And that's probably something that I think Jeff says they can uh, freshen everybody's memory on at some point. I don't know how they get it into the schedule, but you know, look just what just happened this weekend. You know, things happen. So um, at least we're thinking about it. Where we end up, I don't know. And David, yes, jump in. You were. So, um, Madam Chair, Commissioner Ludwig, there was a consensus on the committee that we were going to explore uh, their state grants available to update some of our screening equipment. And so that yeah. uh, is in the works. And could you touch on the grant? Because I forgot about that too. There is a grant that will uh, kind of- The state legislature appropriated some funds for a grant. I don't know the total offhand, but my, my thought when I saw the total is that's not a lot of money for statewide. Right. Um, but we are going to look to apply to that program, which um, it has a pretty quick uh, application deadline. Uh, August 26th or something. Like yeah, but use that to yeah. update some of our uh, screening equipment. And uh, one of the, the state grant program administrator was in our call, and uh, their thought was that was a good uh, request, that that would be a good request. And the uh, equipment that we do have, she said she even agreed with it was some of the best stuff out there, the stuff we're using. 
So that's good news too. So it's, it's good equipment. But... You know, it, it happens everywhere. When I went to um, fly out to go to NACO, they shut down the international airport in yeah. Minneapolis and we couldn't get into park. We couldn't, I mean, they, the freeway was jammed because they stopped everybody from pulling in. They um, routed you on roads that didn't take you to the airport. Um, it was pretty interesting. And it was somebody left their bag unattended and one of the security dogs went crazy. So, I mean, it's, it's everywhere. It was an interesting. And I think I remember correctly, it was a 50% match grant too. So, but oh, that would you be great. To see. We have to contribute 50%. Still, 50% yeah, is better than a full, right? Yeah, well, let's see what the number is. Yeah. Yeah. Are there any others? Yes, I have another. Okay. Uh, Minnesota Department of Commerce or Commerce Department is going to have a meeting right here on um, July 24th. The meeting starts at five, but there's a, like an hour of asking questions and just meeting people and getting up to speed. And the regular meeting goes from six to eight. And it's it's the state doing the public information and why our rental scoping on the um, Iron Design Solar Project up on Ray Lands. Oh, okay. Which the company has reported to us before in a meeting that it, it could mean if this goes through, the county gets like 600 thousand dollars a year um, with that project on site that's uh, helpful and and uh, agreement where it's just between a landowner and the solar company that so it's not he owns all the land so it's, anyway more to come but it's, it's open to the public so if you want to come as a uh, commissioner i'm going to try to be there and i know jj i, I talked to him he's going to be there too it's his, mm -hmm. his district but they're, it's a pretty good group. They, they seem pretty organized. We've met from several countries. Yeah. Good. Um, I did one other. I did Connect Minnesota. It was counties and schools. And what they were looking at was um, broadband in the schools and then how it's working in the counties. And it was interesting to see um, how many people are still dealing with out broadband, but uh, how, how much further it's actually come. So, um, one of the people on there did a shout out to Pine County for um, working hard <laughs> and, and still working hard to get our broadband, but knowing that it, it's difficult. And so um, I don't know if that's a good thing to be put on the map for or not, but um, yeah, it was one of the things that they were really talking about is how to get seniors to um, how to get them PCs and how to understand how to use them, still bringing up to have high school children, kids go in and work at the senior citizen centers to teach them how to use broadband because of telehealth and all of that. But we still have to get the broadband for that to work. So keep moving forward. Are there any other others? All right. Well, if not, we've got upcoming meetings. If you can't make it, give your alt a call and we will um, see what we can get done.